Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with midpoints. So we have to, for each of these given endpoints and midpoints of a line segment, we have to find the other endpoints. So notice in part A, we're given the midpoint of a line segment and an endpoint, midpoint, endpoint for part B, et cetera, et cetera. And we have to find the other endpoints. So notice this question is a little different. So before what was happening mostly is we were given the endpoints of a line segment and we had to find the midpoint right over here. Well, in this particular question, what's going to happen is we're actually given one of the endpoints and we're given the midpoint, right? The endpoint and then the midpoint. And then we have to find the other endpoints. So the process is going to be a little bit different. And you got to be on the lookout for questions like this. You got to read them really carefully because this can come up on your test. So to show visually, at least for the first one, what's happening, we have, let's start with the endpoint. So the endpoint of a line segment is at three and five. So that would be like here and here. And then the midpoint is at negative one and seven. So negative one and seven would be like here and here. So let's say like right there, right? This is the end point. And then this is the midpoint, right? So if we connect these two, so where's the other end point gonna be in this case? Well, it's gonna be somewhere up here, right? So we could tell that just from drawing this, that the x value of this other endpoint is going to be less than negative one, and then the y value is going to be greater than seven. So it can help to draw these out so you know approximately where your target point is going to be. So that's visually what's happening. Now, how do we actually do it algebraically? Well, just in general, the midpoint formula is what we take the x values of the endpoints and divide them by two and then we take the y values sum them up and divide it by two and in this particular question what i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce another variable quote unquote basically this here this formula gives us the x value of the midpoint so i'll Symbolize that as x subscript mid, and that's x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Why I want to introduce this is because this is what we're actually given, and one of these, and then we're going to have to solve for x2. Or you could plug in for x2 and solve for x1. doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. Same thing for the y value. So the y value of the midpoint that we're solving for is going to be this over here. So for example, with part A, let's just look at the x values. Notice we're given the x value of the midpoint. So we could plug in negative one over here. And then we're given the x value of one of the endpoints, right, which is three. So again, it doesn't matter which one we plug it in. I'm going to plug it in for x1 and we'll solve for x2. And then we're going to be dividing by two. And so notice here we have an equation with one variable to solve for. Right? And the way we're going to do it is we're just going to actually cross multiply and then solve for it. Now, before getting into the actual specifics, what I want to do is I actually want to generalize this part first. And so then plugging everything in is going to be smoother. We don't have to keep cross multiplying every time. We could just cross multiply now in this general format. We could put the x value, the midpoint over one, the y value, the midpoint. And let's just cross multiply at this point. So two times the x value of the midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2, like that. And then we're going to be plugging in for x1. We're going to be isolating for x2. So we can bring the x1 over. So basically x2 is going to be 2 times the x value of the midpoint minus x1. 
And so we can just use this formula, this generalized formula, we just plug in here and then plug in here without doing that same algebra every time, if that makes sense. You can do it, you can for each of these plug in here and then do the algebra every time. It might actually be good practice for you. But personally, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to generalize it and then I'm just going to plug in this stuff here and then here to get that x2 value. But whichever way you do it, just make sure you're getting the same answer. So this formula, I'm actually going to rewrite up here. So this x2, which is the x value, the endpoint we're solving is going to be two times the x value of the midpoint minus the x value of the endpoint that we're given. Right, that's going to be the formula there. And then if we do the same thing here for the y value, we'll have two times the y value of the midpoint. One times this is that. So then isolating for y2, we'd have two times the y value of the midpoint minus y1. So I'm going to put that formula over here just to give myself room to work with both of these. Like that. All right, so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for all of these. We're going to be plugging in here and in here, and then we can get that directly. So again, going back to part A, for the x value, the x value of the midpoint uh, is negative 1. So we plug in negative 1 over here, and then we're going to be subtracting the x value, the endpoint that we're given which would be 3. And then notice 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 3 would give us uh, minus 5. So that's the x value of the other endpoint. And then for the y value, we'd plug in the y value of the midpoint, which is 7 minus the y value of the endpoint that we're given, which is 5. So this would be 2 times 7, which is 14, minus 5 would give us 9. And so the coordinates of that other endpoint is negative 5 and 9. And remember, that makes sense according to the diagram that we made before, because we said that the x value is going to have to be less than negative 1. Notice that it is. And notice that the y value is going to have to be greater than 7, which in this case, notice that it is. And when you get your answer, if you do have the time on a test, you could check your answer by taking this midpoint, or sorry, taking this endpoint, taking this endpoint, and finding the midpoint between them and see if you get that midpoint that was given. So we can do 3 plus negative 5 divided by 2. Notice that that's going to give us, what, 3 minus 5, which is negative 2 divided by 2, would give us negative 1. And then we can do 7, no, 5 plus 9 divided by 2, right? The y values of the endpoints, add them up, divided by 2, 14 divided by 2 gives us 7. Negative 1 and 7 is the midpoint that we are given, and we checked our solution right there. So that's a nice way to check your answer for this particular type of question. Right, so those are the answers. That's the answer, that coordinate. That's the endpoint for this line segment over here. Moving on to part B, exact same thing. We're gonna be using this formula here that we came up with. So uh, x2, would be 2 times the x value of the midpoint, which is 1, minus the x value of the endpoint, which is negative 2. So be careful here. If it's negative, you want to put that in brackets. We're subtracting that whole thing right there. And so this would end up being 2, negative negative is plus 2. So we'd get 4 over here. Now working with the y values, we'd have 2 times the y value of the midpoint, which is 0 in this case, minus the y value of the endpoint, which is 6. 2 times 0 
is zero minus six gives us negative six. Right, so the endpoint in this case would be uh, four and negative six. And again, if you wanna check your answer, we can do uh, four plus negative two, which is two divided by two would give us one. Then we could do negative six plus six, which is zero divided by two gives us zero. So you could always check your solutions. Now moving on to part C, so we have this midpoint here of 1 over 2 and 3 over 4, and then we have the endpoint 2 over 5 and 3. So notice in this case we're dealing with fractions, but exact same thing is going to apply, same formula, so basically the x value, the endpoint we're solving is going to be 2 times the x value of the midpoint, which is 1 over 2, minus the x value of the endpoint that we're given, which is 2 over 5. And you just got to do this algebra here. So 2 over 1 times 1 over 2. So 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. This is just going to end up being 1. And then this is going to be, sorry, this is minus. That's going to be 2 over 5. So we'd have 1 minus 2 over 5. Let's change the 1 to be 5 over 5 minus 2 over 5, which would give us 3 over 5. Right, so that ends up being the x value of, um, give me a sec here, yeah, the x value of the endpoint that we're solving for. Right, and then here for the y value, same thing. So the y value, the endpoint that we're solving for is going to be 2 times the y value, the midpoint, which is 3 over 4, minus 3, minus the y value, the endpoint that we're given. So from here, this would be, let's kind of block these off. This would be 2 over 1 times 3 over 4. So this would be like 2 times 3, which is 6. 1 times 4 is 4, minus 3. This simplifies to 3 over 2. This is like 3 over 1. Multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2 to get a common denominator like that. And then we'd end up with negative 3 over 2. So that ends up being the y value. And so the coordinates of that endpoint that we're solving for is this x value, 3 over 5 and then this y value, negative three over two. All right, so exact same process, same algebra with, um, with fractions, just be a little more careful with all your steps and getting the common denominators, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and then over here, make sure that you're multiplying first before subtracting, doing the correct bed mass steps. All right, so this is the answer here for part C. And then finally part D, notice that in this case, it's, um, it's a combination of numbers and variables. It doesn't matter. So same thing, uh, 2 times the x value of the midpoint minus x1. So plugging it in, we'd have 2 times what's the x value of the midpoint, it's 2a in this case, minus x1, which is 3a. This, has, uh, this ends up being 4a minus 3a. Notice these are like terms here, so this just ends up being a, right? 4 minus 3 is just 1. We don't have to write the 1 in front. So this just ends up being a. And then over here, we'd have 2 times the y value of the midpoint, which is b minus the y value of the endpoint, which is 5b. So this would be 2b minus 5b, which would give us negative 3b. Right, so the final coordinate, the final answer of this is a negative 3b, like that. Okay, so that ends up being the endpoint. And again, you could check these. Notice a plus 3a, that's 4a, divided by 2 gives us 2a. 5b plus negative 3b would give us 2b. Divide that by 2 and we get b.
So if you get the time on a test with this kind of question to check your answer, that's how you could do. You could take your endpoint, the endpoint that you're given, find the midpoint of those, and it should equal the midpoint that you were given.